watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. The Lord, welcome to Faith and Grace Life. This is where we share all that Christ has brought for us in and, and, and I pray that you will not miss your blessing today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's start by a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here again to share your word, to share your blessing, to share the kingdom meal that you have prepared for us this hour. We pray that the entrance of this world will give light and give understanding unto the simple. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that in your light, let us see light in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way today and let your people be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today we will be rounding up uh, this our teaching on the cultivating the pilgrim's mentality. We're going to round up with this last topic, which I titled, you know, the issue of pos position and power. We've been looking at this um, series now for about three, four weeks. And um, before I go on to today's topic, I want to quickly make a recap of all that we have taught in this powerful series. You know, having an understanding of the fact that we are strangers in this world is very important. We are pilgrims. We are foreigners. We are just sojourners in this land. Amen. So number one thing I want to really drive home into our art, at least take this all of, uh, take this from this series, that um, as it is written in Philippians 3.20, it says the citizenship of a true believer is in heaven. Our true citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the truth I want you to take home from this series. We don't belong here, you know. So you must know that we are sojourners and pilgrims in this world. And um, we are ambassadors of Christ. This is very, very important. Amen. So the number one step in cultivating the pilgrim's mentality is to recognize the fact that we are strangers and we should live just like that. We should live our life in that manner. Look at what Christ says in the book of John, in Gospel of John chapter 17, verses 14 to 16. It says, I have given them the word. He said, I've given them the word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. You can see, we are not of the world, just as Christ is not of the world. Verse 15, he said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. You can see Christ has prayed for us long before he left that <laughs> the Father will keep us from the evil one. Verse 16, and, and, and he said, they are not of this world just as I am not of this world. You can see each time the Bible or, 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 or Christ repeats his statement is an emphasis just to tell you that, look, this is the truth of the matter. It cannot change. We are not of this world. Just as, you know, Christ is not of this world. Amen. So, we are strangers. And quickly, let me recap to us the characteristics of strangers. The characteristics of strangers are these. Strangers have no permanent, you know, abode. Strangers have no permanent abode. Strangers live in borrowed houses, you know, borrowed land and borrowed countries. You know, if you are a stranger and, you know, if you travel to a place, you will not want to have a permanent property in that place. You know, strangers, you know, are always mindful of their permanent home where, where nothing is borrowed. You know, <laughs> in heaven, nothing is borrowed where we belong to. Strangers are always thinking about the families, the, the family members they left behind and are missing them. That's just the characteristics of strangers. Number six, strangers prefer to gather things they can easily dispose of. So that when they leave, they, they, I mean, they, they won't have issue of um, any attachment behind. You know, number seven, strangers have no serious 
attachment to, thi to things here on earth. You know, this is very important, very, very important. So, uh, uh, the second thing we also mention in the course of this series is then, if we are stranger here or not, then why am I here? Why are you here? Why are you a pilgrim here or not? So, we need to understand the purpose why we are here. Why we are strangers. Why God has kept us as strangers here. You know, number one, because we are pilgrims here or not, number one, to glorify God. We must live a life that glorifies God. Number two, to reconcile people back to God. That's the ministry of reconciliation. That is number two reason why we are here on earth as strangers. Number three, to obey the word of God and to serve God. We are to obey the word of God and do His will, to serve Him. And number four, to prepare for heaven. This place we should live our life. You know, I mean, expecting the return of God, of Jesus Christ. We are to prepare for heaven. Christ has gone to prepare a place for us. And that place where he has prepared for us, he will come and take us one day so that we, where he is, we will be with him also. That is the plan of God for our lives, you know. And when you look at these four, four key, I mean, reason why we are here. And that's the vision of our church. For, for example, Faith and Grace Church. That is, we, we, we focus our, our mission and our vision on these four, four things, you know. And, and, and it says to develop a fellowship of believers. This is our vision statement. It says to, de to, to, to develop a fellowship of believers who will live a life of grace by faith. Walk with God by faith. Serve God by grace and be rapture ready. That's that's our mission. Four key words, you know: live, walk, serve, and be raptured. Amen. My prayer is that everyone under the sound of my voice, as you live your life, as you walk with God, as you serve God, you will be rapturable. In the mighty, we will not miss the rapture. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's my prayer for every member of Faith and Grace Church. For everyone who calls themselves Christian, you will not miss the rapture. In the mighty name of Jesus. The, num the, the, the number th three issue we, 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 I mean, we talked about was the issue of money and possessions. You know, as pilgrim, what is our attitude towards money? And what is our attitude towards possessions? You know, for, for true pilgrims recognizes that the money and possession in his hands are tools given to him or are by God. They are tools in our hand. Money is a tool. My prayer always is that money will be my servant. Dollar will be my servant. I won't serve money. I won't, I won't serve mammon. Mammon will serve me. When I need it, I will send it on an errand. There are tools in our hand. There are tools for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are the tools to help the needy, to poor, to take care of our family. They are just tools. They are not things that we should worship. You know. So when you look at uh, uh, Christ's teachings, you know, we, we learn some things about, you know, how believers should, should, should I mean, undo money and possession. And so from Christ's teaching on money and possession, we learn the following. Number one, be rich in good works. We must be rich in good works, assisting those who are in who do not have the poor, the widow, the orphans, the uh, 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 spend money, you know, invest in evangelism, church building, planting, uh, building hospitals, schools, and building orphanage. Those things will affect and impact other people's lives. People in the in the world, our life should bring joy to 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 the needy, to the poor. That is what that money in your hand is meant for. It's not just for me and my wife and children. No, pilgrims don't have that kind of attitude. You must see that tools in your hand, money in your hand, to bless your family, to take care of your family. Fine, and then you have more than enough to be able to give for good works. That's the plan of God concerning what God has put in you. And number two, you know, I mean, teachings or Christ's teaching on money. This is what Christ taught us, that we should build the home in heaven and lay hold on eternal life. 
How? By donating generously to God's world. By giving generously to the poor and the needy. When you give to the poor, for example, you are lending unto God. You know, everything you give to the poor is recorded in your account in heaven. Whatever you invest in the kingdom of God is recorded in your, in your account in heaven. So you should build a home in heaven. And number three, you, know, you must fund the, the, the spread of the gospel. This is very important. You must support mission works and missionaries. We must assist the media ministry and other ministry of the church. This is important. Look, whatever money is you earn, God will not ask you how much is it, but how much you have spent on his kingdom and his purpose. Because there's nothing you have that you did not receive from God. There's nothing I have that I did not receive from God. And if you receive it from God, why should you boast about it? Why not use it to the glory of the one who has given you all, all things? Amen. So today, our topic for today, now let's quickly zero in as we're rounding off this series. Let's look at the issue of position and power. How should pilgrims here on earth, how should Christian pilgrims, how should we, I mean, undo the issue of position and power? Hallelujah. I mean, this is very important. You know, pilgrims are unattached not only to their money and possessions, but also their, to their position and to their power. You know, we are not just to, to, to be unattached to our money and, pos and possession. You know, there are other things. What the position God has placed you, the power that is in that position, how do you handle it? You are not to attach yourself to that position. Uh, you know, you must understand that all these things, they are transient. They are temporary. They are not eternal. Posi no position is eternal. It's only, the, it's only God that is eternal. You know, no power and position is eternal. No. Everything you see, they, they, they are temporary. They are not permanent. No, they, they, like they say, no position is permanent. Thrones are not forever. I want you to understand that. But we see today there are a lot of people in position of power. You know, they don't want to leave that place. They leave, they get there and see, oh, Oh, they have arrived. I'm, 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 I'm going to die here. You, we, we can see this in, in, our, in our nations over there. People want to die in, die in position. Once you're a president, you want to be a president forever. Once you're a governor, you want to be the governor forever. Once you are in position, you want to be in that position forever. I want to tell you that that position is temporary. Somebody was there before you got there, and somebody will be there after you have left. So don't think that position, everything you see here on earth is temporary. Try and understand that. You know, you know, a seed of Abraham with no abiding seed, we are foreigners and visitors here on earth. So every position you meet yourself, know that, look, God has just put you there for a purpose and know that, look, you are, you are going to be in another position very soon. I'm here today, tomorrow I'll be in another position. You know, nothing is permanent. Look at the life or, 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 in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. We are Abraham's seed. And when you look at the life of Abraham, See the way Abraham lived his life. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says in verse 8, he said, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance. Hallelujah. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Can you see? Abraham got to that place. He was dwelling in tents. Tents means a temporary structure. Abraham did not build permanent structure. Abraham did not say, I have arrived at the city. He has another city in view. Every child of God must have another city in view. Which kind of city is in verse 10? If Abraham is your father, you must 
think and act like Abraham. He said, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That is the that should be the mentality of every sojourner, every every child of God, every uh, pilgrim here on earth. He waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. This is despite the fact that he, when he got to the place where God promised him, he still, he still saw <laughs> another city in view. The Bible says, by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. As in a foreign, we are, we are dwelling in a foreign country. Here on earth is our foreign country. Oh, they have given you ah, a permanent residence in America. Oh, glory to God. It is good, but it's still a foreign country. Oh, you, have, you now have an American passport. Thank God for your life. Oh, we all love it. It's, you are still in a foreign country. You know, Abraham was dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him with in the same promise. Why? Because he was waiting for another city. Did I hear you see another city where Christ himself is the king, which as foundation, whose builder and maker is God? This should be our attitude it will put to us position, you know. And now, let's look at another scenario in the life of Abraham. You know, we are, we are citing the example of Abraham because the book of Galatians says in that 329, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. When you look at the book of Genesis chapter 20, 23, something happened there. And I want to share that story with you. And you see the, see the way Abraham handles it and let them know that, look, you know, <laughs> I'm a foreigner here. I'm, I'm a visitor. Amen. He said in Genesis chapter 23, verse 3 to 4, he said, Then Abraham stood up before, I mean, from before his dead and spoke to the sons of earth, saying, I'm a foreigner and a visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place among you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. You know, and um, when, when, when you look at that, at that he, he sees himself as a foreigner. And you know that even that land where he was is the promised land where God has told him that, look, he, he's giving him, his, but he still seems he said, I'm a foreigner. I'm a visitor here. We are all foreigners here on earth. We are visitors here on earth. You know, there is nothing that is permanent here. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the book of Proverbs chapter 27, verse 24. It says, for riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. Riches are not forever, Thrones are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. Once you are crowned as a king, you are not going to be the king forever. That was the problem of, of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar thought he would be king forever. He said, the Bible says, nor does a crown endure to all generations. No, the Bible says he had a dream, and, he, and in that dream, you know, he saw himself, he looked at all his greatness, and he was thinking in his heart, this is great, am I going to leave all this? And the interpretation of the dream shows him that, look, after you, there will be another kingdom, there will be another empire. You know, you are, you are not in that position forever, and riches are not forever. Riches, you know, money has wings, you know, it can fly away. Have you not heard of the people who are rich in, in, in yesteryears? Are the riches forever? No, the riches are not forever. We, we know people in, in, in our country, in our, there, in our land. I could remember in the city of Lagos, there used to be a man whose house is right on the, uh, I mean, on, on the major highway in the city of Lagos. In those days, the, his own building was so unique, white, beautiful, beautiful mansion, you know. But after a while, the man died. 
And after a few years, do you know what I used to see in that house? I used to see animals, you know, just playing on the corridor where that man used to be the, a very big man. And later before you know it, that building was destroyed and another structure was there. Riches are not forever. All those properties you are seeing, they are not forever. You know, your power, your position is not forever. Nor does a crown endure to all generations. Don't have that wrong mentality that, look, I am going to be in that position forever. Oh, you are now the managing director of that organization. It is just temporary. Oh, you are the general manager of that position. Oh, you are just, it's just there. Oh, you are the president of the greatest nation. It is just for a short time. You know, it there is time by time. Somebody was there before you, another person will be there after you. You won't be the last person there unless Christ come and meet you there. You know, unless, you know, as Christ tarries, you won't be the last person there. You understand? I, 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 I mean, you, we must have this pilgrim's mentality if you are a child of God, if you are a Christian. You must know that there's, there's nothing that comes your way that you should feel that you want to hang on unto it forever. No, 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 no. You are going to leave it behind. Everything we are leaving them behind. Hallelujah. So, what should be our attitude towards power? We must know that we are what we are by the grace of God. We must learn to give God the glory for whatever position we find ourselves. Whatever position God has placed us, we are what we are by the grace of God. We learn this from the scripture, from Apostle Paul. We, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. We must come to that realization. Don't ever think that, look, it is my strength that has brought me there. It, no, 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 it is my strength. Oh, it is my money. No, such thing does not give God the glory. Pilgrims or not, don't behave that way. Don't talk that way. We learn to give God the glory for everything, every position we find ourselves. What about power? Because in a, most all these positions, they are, you know, the power goes with it. I want you to take note of this. This should be our mentality about power. You know, all power belongs to God. We must realize that all powers, all power belongs to God. That power does not belong to you forever. You know, uh, the, the saying goes, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's only God that has absolute power. It's the one that owns all power. It's the almighty and the all-powerful God. Take note of that. That power does not belong to you. You not what what should you do with that position God has placed you? Man, you must use that position to do what? To impart the lives of people around you positively. You must use that I mean impart the life of the people around you positively. This is very, very important. Don't use your position to make life difficult for people. Don't use your position to to to, to to, to, to make life difficult for people. Don't. Because you are going to give account of how you use that position. We are all pilgrims or not. We are going back to give account on how we use our position here or not. This is very, very important. If you are the president, preside well so that when you leave and you give account, you will not be guilty. If you are the governor, make sure you govern well so that when you leave, you will not be guilty as you are giving reports. If you are a senator, be a good lawmaker so that you will not be guilty when you get to report. There is somebody you are going to report to, and he is God. The Bible says, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ that will give an account that will receive you know, reward for all that we have done in this body. If you are a child of God, that is what is going to happen. Number two, impart God's kingdom positively. Whatever position you find yourself, whatever money you have in your hand, whatever power you have, make sure you impart, you know, the kingdom of God positively. Don't be a terror to the kingdom of God. 
make sure you make the you, you make the kingdom of God to to expand, not to cause a trouble into it. For you will give account of how you use the position and the power at the end of the day. Are you a child of God? This word is for you. You are a sojourner. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, <laughs> this word it may not benefit you. The only way it can benefit you is when you surrender your life to Jesus. You make him the, your Lord and your Savior. And if you are ready to do that, you need to confess to him with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he, actually, he died and God raised him up, you know, so that you might be saved. This is very important. Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus? Why not just say this short prayer of, of salvation with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner, but you died for me. He said, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life from this day on. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. When you say that short prayer of salvation, it's a prayer of faith. I congratulate you because your names are now written in the, in the book of heaven and you are now family. You belong to the family of, of, of God. And the next thing you got to do is to join yourself to a Bible-believing church. Because you cannot be a Christian alone. There's no one-man Christian. We are Christian in the body of Christ. You must be part of the body where Christ is the head. Since you have surrendered your life to Christ, join his body so that he will continue to nurture you through his pastors and through the church. Amen. And if you are in the city of Houston, oh, I want to encourage you. You can, you can join Faith and Grace Church. You can come and worship with us. And I'm sure you will like it when you come around. The address is on the screen. I want to encourage you to, to, to give it a try. When you come, you will receive the undiluted word of God. And the word that is able to make you, I mean, uh, I mean, stand well to the end of your life. My prayer for everyone under the sound of my voice. And as many that have taken this step of faith by surrendering their life to Christ. Is that Lord Almighty, you will keep everyone here on earth. That when it is time for you to take us home, oh Lord, Lord Almighty will not be found wanting. Lord, I pray that that home, that wonderful place that you have gone to prepare for us, Lord, you will take us there. Lord Almighty, you will make us rapturable. We will not be guilty at the end of the day. You will keep us standing as your pilgrims here on earth and as your ambassadors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Are now watching Amazing Fire TV.